establishment forever, yea, forever and ever. He has made the decree which will not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you dragons and all beasts, fire, hail, snow, and frost, forming winds, fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, for four trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and feathered birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is on earth and in heaven, and he has exalted the word of his people. All his saints will praise him, even the children of Israel, the people near to him. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him and make him, let the sons of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name, let them dance, let them sing praises to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people, he will exalt the meek and save them. Let the saints be exalted in glory, they will rejoice in their beds. The praises of God shall be in their mouths, and two edged swords in their hands, to execute vengeance on the nations of chastisement on the people, to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron, to execute on them the judgment that have written such is the glory of all his saints. Praise God in his face, praise, praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his infinite greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with temple and dance, praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with sounding cymbals, praise him with loud flashing cymbals, let every breath praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. To you is due glory, our Lord and our God, and to you we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, the world towards men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You who take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You who sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are holy, you alone are Lord, O Jesus Christ, the Lord of God the Father. Amen. Every day I will give thanks to you and praise for you forever and ever, even unto the ages of ages. Lord, give that our refuge from generation to generation. I said, Lord, be merciful to me and heal my soul, for I sin against you. Lord, I have to you, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your life we shall see light. O continue your mercy upon those who know you. Thou safe, O Lord, that we be kept this day without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is your name forever. Amen. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us as we have hoped in you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Master, make me to understand your statutes. Blessed are you, O Holy One, enlighten me with your statutes. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever, despise not the works of your hands. To you is due praise, to you is due song, to you is due glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages, long ago.
sick and suffering, for captives in their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance, fall affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord
The reading is from the first epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. Let us attend. Brethren, behold your calling. Not many were wise according to the flesh. Not many were mighty. Not many were a noble kind. But God chose the foolish things of the world in order to put to shame those who are wise. And God chose the weak things of the world in order to put to shame the things that are strong. And God chose the base things of the world and the things that are despised, even the things that are not, in order to bring to naught the things that are, so that no flesh should boast in the presence of God. But you are from him in Christ Jesus, who for God has become for us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that according to what was written, the one who boasts, let him boast in the Lord. When I came to you, brethren, I did not come to you with lofty words or with wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness, and I was with you in fear, and in much trembling. And my words and my preaching were not in persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith may not subsist in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Peace be unto you, reader. And your spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, dear mothers, brothers, and sisters in Christ, if you will indulge me, I was hoping to fast forward a little bit to the Gospel reading which will be read tonight at Vigil. Because within that reading, we hear one of the most important charges we have as Orthodox Christians living in the world today. I know you have all at one point or another heard the words of the Great Commission, but for the purposes here this morning, they bear repeating. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Amen. These words are the mission statement of all Orthodox Christians. For those living inside the world, this message is very straightforward. We are not called to proselytize to others, forcing church doctrine or fasting on those who are not yet ready to receive them. Instead, we are called to live a Christian life as best as possible, being Christ-like in everything that we do and offering an example by which others may follow. This is what evangelization is for those living in the world. As we are here in the monastery, I wanted to take time and reflect this morning on what evangelism is for those who are living in the monastic tradition. By every right, our brothers and sisters who are living in the monastic life are dedicating their lives already to being examples by which others may follow. They are striving hard to live the angelic life. But how does that translate, brothers and sisters, to an angelic, evangelic life? In a sermon for Orthodoxy Sunday, St. Tikhon of Moscow once described the harsh realities of our lives, likening it to a ship sailing amidst a ferocious and stormy sea which is ready to drown in its waves. The further the ship sails, the harder the waves of life slam against it, and the fiercer they attack it. But the harder the waves hit the ship, the further they are thrown away to rejoin the abyss and disappear. And this ship can be used to describe the monastery church itself, that stable ship which continues to drive and sail through the noise of our personal lives, protecting us from getting caught up and drowning in the evil of this world. Despite the power of the waves, the monastery ship harbors us, and it continues to drive forward towards the heavenly kingdom which is to come. So using that analogy, those living the angelic life of monasticism are first responsible for the upkeep of that ship, which saves us all from drowning. Through their constant prayer and intercession, through all of the services and unbroken traditions, and through all of the unwavering dedication and marriage to Christ, they keep the clean ship and stable. What a blessing it is to know that God has ordained men and women who have dedicated their lives to a life of prayer and worship, resulting in a ship that is constantly being worked on and repaired. It is because of monasticism that Today and every day throughout the world, at every hour of the day, the church is in a state of prayer, even when those who are living in the world cannot be. Secondly, the angelic life calls for monastics to be warriors for Christ. They are called to fight and to protect the ship from the devil who seeks to poke holes in the hull. It was the monasteries which protected the traditions of the church during times of occupation and during times when heresy was running rampant. The angelic life calls for monastics to be responsible for protecting the truth, preserving it unblemished in the ship for generations and generations. We heard yesterday at the noon meal stories of monastics in Egypt who when the government called to tear down the walls of the desert monastery, the monks who were living there formed a human chain and laid down with great courage in front of the bulldozers, and they were showing in a very real way what it means to protect the ship that harbors us all. 
Lastly, and perhaps the most important part of the angelic, evangelic life is to be in charge of the lighthouse. Even though we are protected by the ship, it has no purpose unless it has a destination. And in the darkness of the world, no one is able to see the direction of where we should be going. So monastics are called to be the lights, to illuminate the entire universe with the good news of salvation. They proclaim the incarnation, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and the second and glorious coming. Monastics light the way towards communion with Christ and to our salvation. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the angelic life, the dedication of the monastics here and throughout all of the world are an extremely important component to the evangelic life of the Orthodox Christian faith. Having lived the past three years in the monastery of St. Tikhon of Zodonsk and experiencing and living here this summer, I have been extremely blessed to witness the dedication of our brothers and sisters in their calling to monasticism. Their calling to the church is one that requires our help and assistance, most especially in our daily prayers, as we ask God to give them the strength and the courage to continue to live the angelic, evangelic life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to Jesus Christ. God and those mankind and 
brought close to Eleanor Victoria. He parted this life, and that they may be parted in all their sins, both voluntarily and involuntarily.
begotten, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried. And on the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge on baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand over our life, let us stand with fear, let us attend, that we may offer the holy oblation. Oh. 
rational and bloodless worship, we ask thee, pray thee, and supplicate thee. Send down thy Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts offered, and make this bread the precious body of thy Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of thy Christ. Amen. Making the change by the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Continue to be for those who partake in the purification of souls, their mission of sins, for the communion of the Holy Spirit, for the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness towards thee, and not for judgment and condemnation. Again, we offer to thee this reasonable worship for those who have fallen asleep in the faith. Ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, and ascetic, and every righteous spirit be perfect in faith. Especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Beatrice and the Virgin Mary. Give us this day our daily bread, and 
forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
And gave us those exhaustive by creating mysteries for the good and sanctification of our souls and bodies. Let them be for the healing of our soul and body, the refilling of every adversary, and the illumining of the eyes of my heart, the peace of my spiritual powers, the faith and the shame, the love and faith, the fulfilling of wisdom, the exerting of my commandments, the receiving of thy divine grace.